Is yours is yours L E N O R D? A? I'm very hard for remembering names. L-E-N-A-R-D. Oh, no, L-E-O-N. Leon R is the way it's, it's, it He's looks like. Right. L-E-O. I've been called L-E-O. everything. Really? L-E-O-N. Every mm-hmm. A-R-D. All right. <clears throat> okay, windy weather. Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 2. Woo-hoo. We're moving on. We're moving on to verse two. Yay. Snail power. We'll read verse one, just in case we forget verse one. The beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So God is Jesus. Jesus is God. It's the Word. We went through all that. The same was in the beginning with God. And now that's... We've already gone to the creation. We saw that Jesus Christ is the Creator. We're going to see that again because verse 2 focuses on in, the same was in the beginning with God. And what John is taking us to is he's taking us to the creation, the Creator, Jesus Christ. John's Gospel. Matthew's Gospel represents Jesus as the King of the Jews. Mark represents Jesus as the servant of man. Luke, the son of man, that human side of Jesus. Now what John does in his gospel, he points Jesus as God. And one of the things John has opened up his gospel is, is Jesus is creator, he is God. There are people out there who believe all all kinds of things out there. And it validates, verses 1 and 2, the authority, the same word, of John 1.1, 1, 1, when God created the world, the Word was there. Verse 1 and 2. In verse 3, woo-hoo, all things were made by Him, the Word, and God. And without Him, the Word, the God, was not anything made that was made. So, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. The evolution theory of the Big Bang is against the Bible because it was not a thing that exploded. It was God. Everything that today, all the atoms, you take the smallest atom, the neutrons and the protons, which you need a microscope for. And you take the most largest weighty thing is, I don't know what that is. There's probably things out there bigger than planets. We don't know what's out there in the universe. But you take the Milky Way, that, that is a vast, big thing. And the Bible says from that little ti- ti- tiny atom to a complete universe and all the universes, is made all things and in the all things that are made is mankind and animals all matters were made by God and when God made a monkey he said after his kind and when he made man he said after his kind he did not put a line between the monkey and man there's no monkey's uncle because the Bible says again, and we read it, and it's just so simple, all things were made by Him. And what we're going to do is, we had one week, we looked like we looked at the Jehovah Witnesses, and we looked look at this week and say, well, we're attacking these people. This is the Bible. And today, if you're dealing with an evolution, it's 1 John 1, 3, all things were made by Him. Please explain that to me. <laughs> is your big bang a he? No, they call it a rock. Well, the Bible, my Bible says it's a he. Now, we got a problem today because the people in America don't know gender anymore. And there are probably modern Bibles out there. I know there's a feminist Bible out there. They removed the masculine of man and put God as an it. And one of the, one of the minor prophets says it is not God. 
put God in the net and it says it is not God, you're, you're destroying the Bible and the Word of God. So all things were made by Him. It's a male. It's God. It's Jesus. Jesus was born of a woman of the male sexes, not female. Salvation is of a male. Jesus, the Son of God, not daughter. So what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at creation again because it's the main focus. You can't have someone say, oh, I'm saved, and, well, evolution, we're here. You can't deal with somebody and say, well, you know, you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as, as your Savior. Well, you know, I believe that we came from monkeys. I believe you can't get salvation. There's no way. You got to believe God as God who He is. So, we're made. Let's look at Revelation 4.11 and the purpose. Revelation 4.11, last book of the Bible. And when you deal with an evolutionist, and you can get along with him, long-winded, <laughs> you want to blow their, their monkey fuses, ask them, so, okay, let's, let's both agree on, on two things. You say the Big Bang, I say God. All right, just take your, your talk. Then if it's the Big Bang, and everything's here by what you believe that evolutionary scale. Why? Because, because what is the question that men will ask at least once in their lifetime? Why am I here? Why am I created? I have dealt with many people. Why am I here? I remember a little boy down in the basement with my mom. I said, Mom, I said, do humans come with instructions? <laughs> instructions. No. And my mom lost back then and said, no, they, you don't. And I said, you do with the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. My mom wasn't saved then. And her answer would have been, no, there are no instructions. So as an evolution, why are we here? To blow each other up? To shoot each other? <laughs> to put sewer out in the oceans? To you know, destroy the earth by littering? Why don't, what is the main purpose of it? And they say, scientists say today, I've been reading, that in 2,000, 3,000 years, we're just going to be a pile of goo. We're going to be jello. Really? That's something I want to look that's forward the, to. Yeah, that's what they're claiming we're going to evolve Well, to because... I, I know we, they, they, they like to say from on the theory of evolution that we came out of a primordial so we're going to return. Gonna go back. So we're going to return to it. I guess that's and all these I've computers, never heard that before. I've and all these computers are going to do everything for us. So we're going to lose our arms, we're going to lose our legs, we're just going to be goo on a couch, a real potato. The monkeys are still monkeys. Now, that is something I have forward to looking to. So Revelation chapter 4, 411. Let's see what creation God. 411. Thou art worthy, O Lord. There he is. To receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all, all things. So you see, an evolution cannot believe the Bible and God as, as his Savior. God created all things. That's exactly what John said in John 1 3. For thy pleasure. God, everyone thinks God is so, you know, he doesn't do nothing. For thy pleasure. They are and were created. And it's amazing that at the bottom of the darkest part of the oceans of the world, they find these colorful fish. Hubble Telescope is coming up with excellent and wonderful pictures of the solar system that man cannot see with his naked eye. Now my question is why? Where did colors come from the rainbow colors, the spectrum of the rainbow. Where did that come from with a Big Bang? And why? And yet God says, I like color. Look around. Look where he put insects that you swat with a fly. 
has beautiful wings, dragonfly, and annoy you. The sun, if he could look, look at it and not burn your eyeballs out. And like I said, the fishes at the bottom of the ocean, all these star clusters where man can't see. God loves color, and the Bible says why? Because it's his pleasure. And with the creation of God, what pleases God? To receive glory. You don't get that from evolution. It gets credit to a whatever. You give honor to God. You respect God who he is. You, have, you give him power. Well, how can you give God power? And then when you say power today, you, you know, the kids are growing up even in Baptist churches, you don't put a cape on, I'm super somebody. That's not the power. That's where you stand there or kneel there or lay there and say, God, you know what, this is your life. I'm saved by your son. Whatever you want to do, do it. That's power. God, back me off. I have no idea what I'm doing. If I get involved, I'm going to mess it up. Take over. That's giving God power. And that's hard because you know what? Your flesh wants to take it back. You give God your life and the flesh comes back, <laughs> I want to do this. And it's like, you know, you're not supposed to. And you're taking that power back. But when you yield your life and your you, everything about you to God, that is God's plan. And that's why we were created. And there's a verse that says that God gave all power to Jesus Christ. Right? Gave all power to Jesus Christ. You know, and the thing is, when God made Adam and Eve, he made them naked. God enjoyed that. Now, today's time, you say, oh, no, 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 no. But that's Satan in the world. That's Satan in his work. Satan has taken the beauty that God has made with a man and woman that they were not ashamed. And put it on a computer screen and put it in a magazine and put it flaunt. And yet God says the marriage bed is honorable, but a whores and adulterers God will judge. See, there's a beauty that God has with a man and a woman together married. That Satan has changed. There is no joy in God in adultery and fornication, but when a, a married couple together behind closed doors, that is pleasure to God. And things have been changed. So it's a marriage bed of the blessed. It's blessed. Now the thing is... There's no shame in the marriage bed. But and, adultery and whoremongers, you should be ashamed. Now the thing is, the people right. today, they get this no, rainbow. They, to be yeah. they get this rainbow. There's, there's no, there's and you can have the rainbow. No embarrassment. The world yeah, that's another thing that they've perverted now. The rainbow, but, but the thing is, they, my bow in the sky won't flood the earth. Well, see, again. the thing is, it says right. the Bible says the bow. It doesn't it's ever say rainbow. rainbow. Yeah, yeah, but it, the colors of the bow. But now and that color the, was to show yeah, that bow in the sky was to show Noah and the animals. I remember what I did. I remember this covenant. And it was selected. All the vast colors as they mix into each other makes the same color. They say there are seven general colors. Seven in the Bible's color. And they got a black and they got a white. And anything in the middle is gray. So when the when the world makes a perverted movie, they call it fifteen shades of gray. Seven is complete, right? Seven is complete. Seven is complete. So we were created not by accident, but we were created for giving God glory, honor, and power to our Creator. And when you don't, you have failed God. And I wouldn't be on this. I wouldn't want to be on this failed side. Hebrews one two. What is changing pages for me? Hebrews chapter one verse two. Every week we come, there's Wednesday. Or somebody more. Hebrews 1. Hebrews chapter 1. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. And that's why you've got to go here and there to find it. Because God wants you to study, and I'm. 
this way. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. It would be neat if God put everything in one book, you know, all creation in one book, and all how to be a perfect Christian in one, another book, and, you know, all about God in book three. That would be great, but that's not study. And you would find no perfectly textbooks written as how the Bible's written. How come we got a book of Moses way back in B.C. agreeing with John A.D. on this side of the cross? And when you study your Bible and you see this person write this and you see this person writing that and you say there's a thousand years between, you're like, wow. So Hebrews 1, verse 2, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, it's all thinking, by whom also he made the worlds, the sun. So there are people out there, again, this is the Bible, this is scripture with scripture. I'm not tagging people, I'm just going with what the scripture says. There are people out there who say, well, I worship God. What about Jesus? Well, he's a lesser. He's not important. He's a teacher. He's not God. He's Michael. He's this. He's anything but God. But the Bible has read, and we've seen, He's Creator. And if He's Creator, He has to be God. All things. And there, there was a time Jesus is, is in Israel. He's alive, and He's well. He's a human. And the people are crying out to Jesus, wonderful Jesus, and the Pharisees say, Jesus, shut them up. I'm tired of this worship of you. And He says, listen, if I were to shut them up, the rocks speak out. And there's a wonderful thing that the creation one day that Jesus Christ is going to lift that curse off this earth. He's going to sit king of the Jews for, for a thousand years. And this earth is going to be in the perfect beauty as it was in Edom. And all will be given honor and glory to Jesus Christ. That's not today. This country has given one day in a year to thank God, called Thanksgiving. And we have evoluted ourselves away from that. Instead of the woman making turkey dinners and stuffing for the family on that, she's getting a nap because she's going to go out at 11 o'clock and camp out in front of the store so she can use her credit card for money they ain't got called a Black Friday. Black Friday puts you in the red. What happened to George Washington's proclamation that we are to give thanks to God, our Creator, all night? And I'll give you that much credit that there was a man who honored God by thanking Him. There's no thanking today. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So we see God the Creator worthy of power, praise, and honor. Now we see Jesus Christ honor, worthy, and praise. I mean, He's the one that suffered and died. The Bible says that Jesus was so marred, He didn't even look like a human. And you're going to dare to say that His mother is there to be you're going to dare to say that walking old ladies across the street is the way to salvation when he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life? When he puts those nail-pierced hands that are still pierced? You better reverence him or he'll tell you, depart from me, you work as iniquity, I never knew you. Imagine God telling you to go to hell. That's it. You're done. But even then you're not done because you'll be burning for a whole three. So you see when the fact is, and we're, we're also when we're getting studies, when we're dealing with lost people, it's not just say, hey, say this prayer, you're gonna go to heaven, is it? You gotta to get to know who, who God is. Who you're talking to. Who is Jesus? And when you're dealing with religions, you gotta know 
primary parts of what that religion believes in, Gee, you don't need to study the whole thing out. Now, Catholics, well, there's a Jesus, but he's not the top dog. Your whole witness is, he's, he's not God. The Mormons, I have no idea. He came over to North America and did something. I don't know. That's weirdo. Yeah. It's Masons have a Jesus. Here something. The Masons have a Jesus. But their religion goes all it's supposedly back to Solomon's Temple. There was no Jesus. So before we even get them down the Romans road, we gotta figure out what do they believe about God and Jesus, which are one in one. So see, we're seeing the importance today of John worshiping God in the Son. That's what it all lays down to. When we go to heaven, it ain't about us. We all get brand new bodies. But it's the body that is sitting on that throne. And why we are there. The only reason I'm going to be before the throne is in Jerusalem because the one that's on that throne suffered and died for me. That's it. It ain't the person that witnessed to me. It ain't the person that wrote the Bible. It's the one that's on the throne. It's the one that is the Word. Uh, Colossians 1.16 We go witness to people, we have to carry a polluted Jesus. Now they're not going to get all this. And you don't break out, okay, let's, before we get saved, then let's work on the creationability of Jesus. No. Salvation is simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Then you train them, as we're sitting here today, opening the Bible and looking at the treasure. Colossians 1 16. For by him. Alright, let's find out what we're talking about. Let's look at 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Alright, who's, who's delivered me from hell? And has translated us into the kingdom of his dearest son. Okay, capital S. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That's Jesus. That's my only means of salvation. So, okay, we're looking at God and we're looking at Jesus again. Who's the image of the invisible God? That's a good image. Any other images are bad, according to Scripture. The firstborn of every creature. Oh. Now, they'll take that verse and go mess with that. They'll see Jesus was born. No. For by him were all things created. John 1 3 that are in heaven, moon, stars, planets, solar system, nebulas, whatever but Everything out there that Hubble takes a picture of is created by Jesus. And they give honor to Hubble, not to God. And they send things out to Mars because we're trying to find water so we can disprove the Bible using our tax dollars. Ridiculous. You got people that are, are have no water to drink in this world and you can't try to take your money instead of going to Mars and come up with a system to turn the salt water into water so people can drink. No, but you're trying to find water on Mars. No one's living there. It's so bad the Martians keep trying to come here. Yeah. Haven't seen a Martian since uh, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard a UFO report since it? Okay, all things in the heaven. All the stars, all the moons. That's God. That's some God we got. Hey, some God. That are in the earth. In the earth. Earthworms. Ants. Dirt. Rocks. Tree roots. You know, where they say this rock stanza was 4,000 years old, and this rock stanza is a million years old, and this stanza where the dinosaurs are 18 billion years old, and it, and... And how did all the different and diamonds, varieties... And diamonds. Diamonds are in the ground. Gold is in the ground. Silver is in the ground. Brass is in the ground. And the Bible says that's all made by God. Your automobile is made by God. All the metal, except for today's cars, are made by glass. Which is chemicals which come from the ground. 
So when you can thank God for your car, because the resources, all the resources we have with the periodic table and the stuff we don't know that's in the periodic table that we don't know about is made by God. That's everything. I would assume if you would say the periodic table, that's everything. And even still, we don't know it all. They're finding new chemicals. I did a search, uh, I think last month, a month before that. How many, how many materials man has found chemicals since the periodic table when I went to school? And there are just tons and tons of stuff that they found. Brand new. They're finding brand new fish all the time now. That's God. And you know what the Bible says? It's in Psalms. He says he calls all the stars by name. Now you ask me, when I pray for Louise, which I just finally got her name right, I'd be, oh, God, you know, I forget names. I forget that person's name. I go to church, I forget that guy's name. I still don't know that guy's name at church. And you're telling me I have a God that has a name for the quadrillions of stars. And then he knows my name, and he knows the name of the place where I live, and he keeps his eyes upon me. And if there is a man that is about to call upon Jesus for salvation, he will escape everything and get down where that man is. And the angels will rejoice in heaven when someone will call upon Jesus as their Savior. And that name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He knows those names without looking in that book. He knows the names of all those stars. And he knows the PR. You could sit God down, he'll never get an F on any kind of school test. I had to memorize the periodic table when I went to school, but I don't know it today. God does still. That's amazing. And we're still not done. Ready? Visible. God made my wife. God made the wood, trees, grass. A few incests I wish he didn't make, but he made them. I see them too much, too many ants, too many fleas. God made them. And there was a time that God says, I'm going to drown out the world. I'm going to curse the earth because of man again. I am going to flood the earth out. And I want you to take two male and female into that ark. And we have the animals today because God. Everything you see. Now, anything man-made is, again, it's a resource that God has given us. Why it's here. Things invisible. I have never seen my brain. Yeah, I know God made it. There are things in this air right now we don't see. I'll give you one good thing. Pollen. We don't see it, but boy, we can feel it. Pollen? Pollen, yeah. There are, I don't know what I've been dealing with, but I guess it's pollen. There are atoms and things we don't see. And they're made by God. God made it all. Visible in those, whether they be thrones. Now, I can't do this anymore because we have a new president. But I would say back when, when uh, President Obama was in the White House, people hated him. God put him in the White House. Oh, no, we, well, I had one man tell me, well, we voted for it. I said, maybe God changed your vote. Show him in Romans where it says that we're supposed Romans to. Romans 13, yeah, we'll go over to me. Who's ever on the throne, no matter how much you hate or like them, God put them on that throne. You're supposed to pray for them. You're supposed to pray for your leaders, whoever they are. Thrones. Dominions. That would be your, your governors. That would be your mayors. That would be your police chief. We're supposed to be, as Christians, praying for all the powers that be. Yeah, that's the I pray for the, the Dayton Police Department because there may be times I may have to rely on them. Yeah. You know, they're unreliable. That's on tape. But I pray for them. I have no problems with the law because I don't do nothing illegal. Except for preach the gospel. To them, that's illegal, but... Principalities and or powers. Again, 1 John 1, 3. All things were created by him. 
and for him. So whatever natural resource that man uses, if he does not give God the glory, he is sinning. You mean John 1-3? Yeah. John 1-3. You said 1 John. I would say 1 John. Mr. Washington, when he took a peanut, he gave God the glory over that peanut, and he said, God, this is your peanut. I want you as my Savior, and all the things that he'd done with a peanut, peanut butter, peanut oil, peanut fertilizer, peanut, and you, you read all the things that he'd done with that peanut, and he gave God the glory. And I'm talking about a black slave. Gave glory to God, and God gave him all the resources. The man that came up with Israel did not patent or trademark insulin so it could be cheap today, gave God the glory. Penicillin, all the works of God. Why are not automobiles today, why are they recalled? Because God never gave them the glory. You do know that Henry Ford was a, a founder of Nazism a friend of Adolf Hitler who hated Jews, and God yeah. said, I will curse yeah, them that curse you. Dearborn paper, he printed the, the poor Paul to the, the elders of uh, yeah. the elders of Zion. And the Bible says, if you curse that Jew, I'm going to curse you. He did found our road dead. Fur fixed the broken daily. He did make a retraction, but that's only under pressure. Under pressure. Yeah. Revelation, I mean, not Re Romans chapter 13. A little bunny trail. Bunny trail, maybe. Romans 13. His cup falls over. Get it later. Romans 13. Romans 13. Romans 13. Again, we're looking at the power of creation, what God deserves. You know, the fact is, here's the fact that, I mean, not in the scripture, but this will be scriptural. If there was no creator God, there would be no us. I mean, without God. That's it. Everything else in heaven, he created, he created the angels, he created the cherubims. The only thing that has ever, ever, ever been, and always been, and always will be, and always has been, is God himself. He's never been born, he's never had a beginning, he's never had an ending. Satan has a beginning, and Satan will have, not an ending, but he'll have eternity in the lake of fire. I am here because of God. We are here studying the Bible because of God. We can, without God, we can think of a billion things to do. But we're giving God an honor by opening His Bible and reading it. It says, 13.1, let every soul, so that's all souls. It's not just saved people. Be subject unto higher powers. That's president, kings, governors, mayors. For there is no power. We saw that in Revelation 4. Power. There is no power but of God. That's important for the next one we'll look at. All power comes from God, even Obama came from God. Many churches don't want to believe that. But... The office of the presidency came by God. And it's kind of funny because since the office of the presidency, this country has never had a revival. A good one. Bible revival. They've had all kinds of worldly ones. The powers that be. The powers that be. 
are ordained by of God. And when you think of a preacher, somebody who's in the pulpit, you know, he's ordained for the ministry. That unsaved president, that unsaved mayor, that unsaved police chief is ordained by God. God laid his hand on him for that office and he'd be wicked or he'd be right. This is a hard chapter to swallow by many Whosoever therefore resists the power that God's given, resists the ordinance of God. Driving 56 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour zone, you're resisting God. Just as much as you're selling or doing coke. All have sin. I'm sorry, God. All sin is sin. And when we break the law, we're breaking the ordinance of God. Resist the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now, if I break the speed limit, that doesn't mean I'm going to hell. That means that I've angered God and God needs to deal with me. And when that cop pulls me over and writes me a ticket, I deserve that ticket by God. It's a big ouch in the butt with a rod to say, you haven't been doing that. For rulers are not a terror to good works. Now, if the cops came here right now, I wouldn't be afraid. Unless they had the agenda by the city of Daytona to remove us. But I haven't done anything wrong. They've been giving you a hard no. time. Nope. No. So if the cops pulled up right now, I would have no terror at all. Yeah. In fact, I'd probably invite, we know a few, I would invite them over. I know a few that they would drive away. <laughs> but to the evil. Can I now, say something? Yeah, you sure. talk about these powers appointed by God. It's a hard thing, at least for me, to understand. I believe it, because the Bible says so. But now you have, for example, our abortion laws. You have politicians who advocate and don't alter lifestyles and stuff. That's sad. That's, see, every man's, give, every man's given a free will. You can yeah, do right, right or you can do wrong. It's gotta be, it's free, and right. they're doing wrong. Yeah. And they'll have to give an account. And that's what we're talking about right now. See, if you do good, you don't have to worry. But to do evil. God put them in the office yeah. Yeah. to do yeah. good. Yeah. But, but they have, they they have a free good. will yeah. to yeah. do good or bad. Now, they're given that the opportunity, cops, I guess. Yeah. If the cops showed up right now, there'll be some people that would leave. Because they they're doing evil. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wouldn't. I, I still don't. You know, my point being is, why put them in office in the first place if God knows what they're going to do? I guess well, I'm going to well, you keep that thought, and I'm going to show because you something in a minute. Gonna, it's going to get apostate, the whole world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, see, the, see, going on see, the thing is, chapter 13, it. verse 1 says, There is no power. Yeah. That's God's power. There is no power but of God. And the powers that are ordained of God, all right? Whatever they do, they are put in that office by God to help us that do right. Matthew chapter 4. No, I want Leonard to look at verse 3. Well, the mm -hmm. rulers are not a terror to good works. That was free. But Matthew but chapter but 3. Evil. I mean, Matthew evil. chapter 4. Matthew evil. chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. I wonder why he does it. That's yeah. my, you know, knowing he, I mean, he knows everything already beforehand. That's He's Matthew. still giving him the opportunity. Matthew, Matthew chapter 4. four. That's That's great. Great. Matthew? Four. Matthew chapter 4, verse number. Yes, I do. <laughs> Someday, I'll get the opportunity. I'll have to. <laughs> Matthew 4 8. <laughs> 4 a. 4 a. Now here's with your question letter about the powers that be, Matthew 4 8. Again the devil taketh him up to a seen high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory thereof. And he says unto him, all these things, all these things, that matches with what we're, John 1, 3, all these things will I give, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. 
Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only thou shalt. Now when Satan tells Jesus, I'll give you all these powers that be, Satan does not rebuke him with that. Satan's in charge of his world, and he got that power from God. And Jesus answers your question, Larry, like, you're supposed to worship God, not you. So the people in power, they, have, they ought to worship God. But in turn, they worship Satan and don't have to give an account for that. See, every man's given a free will. Do right or do wrong. That started in the garden. And here's two possibilities. Imagine Satan going up to Jesus. I'll give you the whole world. And he has that power, and Satan and Jesus does not rebuke him. He said, all. He's practically quoting from John chapter 1. All the things that you made, Jesus, I'll give it back to you. He, just, he has that power. And there are people in the world, history, now, present, and the future, that are set up by Satan. They took that challenge right there. Now, they're damned if they don't get right, if they don't repent and get right. On this rock and roll thing that grew up when a flag grew up, they literally just came out publicly saying they sold our souls to Satan. But now, unless they repent and got right, they'll die and go to hell, and then they'll face God in judgment, and they'll have to, okay, listen, I gave you this office of responsibility. What did you do with it? Now, God gave the Jews the office of the priesthood, called the children of Levi. And when Jesus came and lived, that office of the priests is the ones that had him crucified under Roman government. They're going to have to give an account. They were supposed to be right. They were supposed to teach the people. The people were unprepared when Jesus came. There was their Messiah, but the priests had not been doing their job. Oh, I wouldn't want to stand in their shoes when they stand before God one day. Every man, whatever what he does has, hey, you're all to serve God, as Jesus said, or as Satan said, you can serve me. And Jesus says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Jesus saying that, now you imagine, Jesus the judge, and you serve somebody else. That's harsh. That is harsh. Now the Gospel of John is that Jesus is God. John begins with Jesus as God and as creator, God is the creator. And only after Jesus, the word, and God said, let there be. That's the word. Jesus is God, the word, and Jesus is God, the creator. And he's God, my savior, which we'll look into later. And then we're going to have to next week, next time, Lord willing, we're still going to look at this creation. Because we're not done yet. There's more than, you know, there's more because the world has complicated it and it strains the children and the people of what creation really is. The Bible speaks more about the creation that God done than the existence of God. The Bible takes God's existence. There's no question God's here. Now let's look at what he's saying. There's more details about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ than his birth. I cannot give you the exact date that Jesus was born. It's not December 25th. I can tell you that right now. It is not. But I can tell you his date. I can tell you the, the time that Jesus died. He died April 14th at 6 p.m. Jewish time. Isaiah 53 says he was bruised, beaten. The Bible says in Psalms he had his beard plucked out. It says they were spit upon. He'd be rejected. All of his disciples would run away. One of his disciples would sell him out for 30 pieces of silver. There'll be no king in the land. <laughs> and yet, the Bible says... Oh, okay. Is it Abus 14? Abed. A-B-I-D. -A That's the Jewish first month. Jewish first month. That's the Passover night in Exodus. That's when they came out of Egypt. Yeah. Jesus is the Passover. Land. Yes, he is. The Lamb so of God was taken away the sin of the world. Yeah. Died. 
Now, I can suggest what day he was born, but I can't. That's why he had, they didn't say that they had to take him off the cross. That's why he died, quickly. died. Quickly. Right. put him in the, in the tomb because it was the Sabbath. That's why he died, died, because the thieves were still alive. It was the Passover night. Yeah, he they gave up their the legs, but he was already dead. Yep. Yeah. So they thrust the spear in his heart. So, Lord well, we're going to pick up the creation again, but we were made to find us. made by God, and we were made to give glory and honor to God. Now, I'm going to be the first person at this table, at this Bible study, to tell you, I don't do that. I What's fail. What's that? Give God the glory and honor that He deserves. Don't we all? <laughs> I'd be the first to say I don't. I'd be the first to say that I've gone on my own merit and made a boo-boo of my life. First commandment is God first, all the time, every time. I am. When somebody comes up to you and you're, and you're witness and you're dealing, oh, I keep the commandments, <laughs> right? Ask them, the first thing you got up this morning when the alarm clock, did you think about God or you think about the snooze button? Because you think about the snooze button, you violated the first commandment. You know, your first thought when you got this morning, you had to go run to the bathroom. Now, you're not thinking about God. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> You know, when you sign that paper and you're trying to make the payments, you did not think about God. God is so wonderful, so great. Amen. Lord God, the Father, I just thank you for this study. Lord God, I thank you for creating me and everything that we need. You provided our needs, Lord God. You, our bodies need water. You gave us water. And Lord, yet you gave us one great thing. You gave us the blood of Jesus Christ who cleanses from all sins. You give me your reservations in the land book of life into new glory, into new heaven, to new Jerusalem. And for Jesus' sake, Lord God, as we go away, Lord, I pray for cars, I pray for health, I pray, Lord God, for Friday, Lord. Really. I pray, Lord, next week, Lord, we get to see new faces. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen.